Hello everyone, I am Patel from LG Institute of Engineering and Technology in the Department of Electronics and Communication. Welcomes you to the introductory session of wireless communication. So let's start the session. First of all, what is wireless communication or why wireless communication is necessary over the wired communication? So first is a communication. Communication means transferring of information from one place to another place means from the transmitter and to receiver and without use of wire is called as a wireless communication. Now what are the advantages of wireless communication over wired media? So first is mobility. It offers mobility means user can move around the network or you can say that with connectivity with the network user can move around the particular service area without use of wire. So it can be offered by wireless communication. Next is increased reliability. Obviously without use of wire or cable it increases the reliability or there may be not, uh, not a chance to break down of particular network. So it can increase the reliability. Next is easy installation without the uh, connectivity of the cables, optical cables. So it can be easily installed to the system and obviously the cost of cable can be cut down in case of wireless communication. So the overall communication system cost is less as compared to wired communication in this case. Next is rapid disaster recovery. There may be a natural disaster like the earthquake or flood or maybe a case of accident. So in that case the organization network can collapse. So it is necessary to immediately build up the new network that can be only possible with the wireless communication. So keeping this all the parameters in the mind, let's start the course with the course content that are associated with the wireless communication. The course content first unit is introduction to wireless communication system. In this first unit, we see about the introductory part about different generation or we can say that the evolution of wireless communication from first generation to fifth generation which included the 4G standard that is the LTE means long term evolution. In this unit we will discuss about the how the first wireless communication system is demonstrated using Macroni using the equations of Maxwell's concept. In the Maxwell concept, the electromagnetic radiations occurs and in that we discuss about the how time varying electric field generates a magnetic field and magnetic field generates the electric field. So these all are included in chapter unit number one. Then later on we discuss about the different associated techniques of wireless communication, different generation of wireless communication that are based on the analog communication or digital communication. So in this unit, first of all the first generation standard, then the different second generation standard that are GSM, means global system from mobile. Then we discuss about the 2.5G standard that is the GPRS, General Packet Radio Service and ETGE means Enhanced Data Rate for GSM Evolution. And lastly, we discuss about the third generation wireless communication that is CDMA 2000 or WCDMA. So these all are unit number one. In the unit number two, the cellular concept and system design parameters fundamental. In this unit number two, we will discuss about the why the hexagonal cell is generally preferred choice for the cellular cell concept other than the uh, other shapes like uh, rectangle or circle. 
So then we discussed about the hand of typing that is the base of the wireless communication means when what will occur when the user moves from one base station to another base station or we can say that when the user moves from one service area to another service area. So these are the handoff strategies then we will discuss about the umbrella cell concept and then we will discuss about the various parameters for the performance to increase the cellular cell capacity that are the cell splitting, cell sectoring and the micro cell zone concept. Then in the unit number 3 that is mobile radio propagation. In this unit we will discuss about the basic propagation methods that are reflection, diffraction and scattering and the models associated with it that are the ray ground reflection model, knife edge reflection model and free space propagation model. In this all three all three models we will discuss about how to increase the received power strength or we will try to increase the uh, better performance for at the receiver end or we can say that to reduce the path loss. So these all techniques are discussed in unit number 3 that is mobile radio propagation. In the unit number 4 that is multiple access technique. In this unit, we will discuss about it, how many users can access the same set of channel or same set of frequency at a time. So, it is called as a multiplexing technique. In this technique, we will discuss about the basic multiple access techniques that are FDMA, TDMA and CDMA, frequency division, time division and code division technique. Then, in unit number 5, that is wireless system, in this unit number 5, we will discuss about the second generation standard GSM in detail. Means the frame structure of GSM, the architecture associated with it, then the number of forward channels and reverse channel and how this particular speech is coded at the further end. So these all are included in unit number 5 with followed by the CDMA forward channel structure and reverse channel structure. So this is unit number 5. In unit number 6 that is recent trends. In this unit we will discuss about the wireless standards like Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, WiMAX techniques means all the recent trends associated with the wireless communication we will discuss in unit number 6. So these are the all 6 uh, uh, chapters that is uh, for wireless communication this course. So let's start with the, some basic terms associated with the wireless communication but before discussing it let's see some limitations of wireless communication that is radio signal interference. Obviously there may be a case that the WLN and Bluetooth with the example of WLN and Bluetooth we can associate uh, with this limitation. You can also take one another example for the signal interference that can occur in the wireless communication because of the same set of frequency or channel use. Next is health hazards due to high level of radio frequency or high level of RF energy because the wireless communication uses the range of the megahertz or the gigahertz means in the, on the microwave range it can operate so it can damage the human organs and that is not desirable. Next is security concerns due to the network traffic issues because there may be possibility that many channels are used at a, ta at a time so security is affected so these are the three major limitations of wireless communication but, are, but they are not at the up to the mark over the advantages of the wireless communication that we will discuss in the previous slide. Next is types of mobile radio transmission system of wireless communication. First is simplex system. Simplex system means a one way system. We can say that it is a type of broadcasting like the radio or TV means one way communication is possible with it. Next is half duplex system. Two way communication means user can transmit from transmitter to receiver but not simultaneously like walkie talkie. Next is full duplex communication system. In this 
two way communication is possible means from transmitter to receiver and receiver to transmitter it is possible but simultaneously this is possible like a cellular phone so these are the basic three types of mobile radio transmission next is multiple access technique multiple access means the many user uses the same set of channel at a time that is called as a multiplexing the basic technique is fdma fdma means frequency division multiple access in this figure you can see that the frequency is divided into the number of frequency band or we can say that in the number of channels the frequency is divided means at a time one user uses the one set of frequency and frequency is divided into number of bands so in this case we can say that the source wastage is possible next is tdm means time division multiple access in this you can see that overall time is divided into the number of time slots instead of the frequency band so in this case obviously the synchronization at the receiver end is necessary because the user uses uses the particular frame structure instead of the individual transmission so this is the case of tdm technique next is cdm so in this case you can say that the frequency and time is divided into the number of coded word now in this case the narrow bandwidth signal is divided into the large bandwidth signal and generate one particular code this code is called as a pn sequence pn pseudo random sequence and then the bits are transmitted so in this case the coded word is necessary if we talk the case of tdm then in that case synchronization is necessary and fdm is better but in that case the source wastage is there so you can uh, choose wisely about the multiple access technique that may be one another case of multiplexing that is over fdm but we will see about it on the unit number 4 if you have more doubts about the session you can ask me on my email 